Good afternoon and good evening, everybody. Simone, can you hear us? Yes. Hello, Ruth. How are you? Hello. Um, so good afternoon, everybody around the world. Um, Simone and myself are delighted to be presenting uh, today at the Copenhagen Fashion Summit. And our theme today is circularity at scale. Uh, but let's start with some introductions. Uh, Simone, do you want to go first? Yes, uh, uh, my name is uh, Simone and I'm the director of Italian branch of uh, Quantis. And we are international consulting firm. And more informally, let's say we are a team of uh, creative sustainability uh, scientists. That's uh, about uh, me. And my name is Ruth Farrell and I'm Global Marketing Director uh, in Eastman's textiles business, um, where we lead with Ornaya brand portfolio. And I'm here in Switzerland. Um, so Qantas and Eastman have been friends for quite a number of years. Um, and uh, I would say that Simone and the team in Qantas have, have been quite a thought partner in our journey. And uh, Simone and myself decided that we get together for this presentation because I think we share a shared vision that we all want to make sustainable fashion accessible to all. Um, and uh, for the last two and a half years, we've been pushing boundaries, Simone. Uh, can you remember the first time you met us? Yes, yes. It's true that the, the collaboration between uh, uh, Eastman Nayan and Quantis uh, started um, some years ago. And personally, my, my first uh, um, opportunity to uh, collaborate with you was uh, early this year in January uh, where you when you organize amazing uh, event in uh, in Italy in uh, Cernobbio uh, on the the lake of Como and I remember the great event the very engaging discussion with Italian meals and also the very very beautiful uh, location unfortunately today we are not this uh, this kind of uh, uh, location, but I hope that the, the output of uh, our discussion will be even more useful for for the fashion sector to to be in a more sustainable uh, way. Indeed, we're in a very very different world right now, Simone. But I think both of us feel that even though we're going through this COVID pandemic, there is a heightened appreciation of sustainability and maybe some of that is crystallizing intention some more. So fingers crossed that we'll all be back in Copenhagen fairly soon. Um, so today what we'd like to do is introduce you to a concept around sustainable fashion without compromise, introduce you to um, a potential circular fiber option um, that's currently available today, but also talk about um, circularity and, and really the impact it can have on, on climate change. So we're going to take you through um, a short case and then we'll have uh, some time for questions at the end. Now, to kickstart, Simone, I think you have quite a provocative question for everyone. Yes, thanks. So indeed, the, 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 our idea was to, to engage a little bit the, the audience uh, uh, and therefore we have a, a slide on the, on the next uh, slide where we put uh, the different contributions when uh, we take the, the full picture of the fashion and apparel sector. So let's say that we have different um, stages uh, from the fiber production, of course, to the end of life of our clothes. And in the middle, you have the different steps. So the preparation of the, the yarn, the fabric, and all the processing. And of course, we have also to consider the logistic aspect, so the distribution. So let's say that here on this slide, we, all, we have the different uh, contributors, the different part of the story when you are trying to define the apparel sector. Now, if we are observing this sector from a climate change perspective, uh, my question for our audience today is what is the main contributor to climate change? So in terms of carbon footprint, what is the main contributor when we are comparing these different um, life cycle stages? So to give you the possibility to answer, we have the possibility on your right part of the screen, if I'm not wrong, to have this pool section. 
So where you can find a different uh, um, option and make your uh, decision and give your answer. I'm just uh, uh, double checking if the audience can have access to this uh, pool. And just to be sure, the question is, in terms of climate change, what is the main contributor? What is your feeling? Is the fiber production that drive the impact? Is the end of life? Is the fabric preparation? That's the key question that we are addressing to our, our audience. So, I guess that we have to be able to open the, the chat uh, if it's feasible. Ruth, are you able to open the chat just to, to, yeah. to or give me a, a feedback if we receive, we are receiving uh, answer from uh, the yeah, audience? Yep, yeah, we are receiving them. Let me just see if we can. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yes, everyone it can see the chat. Okay. It's good that the, the audience can have a, a little bit more time to, to think about this, this question and give the, the answer. So now, uh, I don't have the full visibility on the answer, but uh, now you can compare your own answer with what the science are telling us. So we can move to the next slide route and uh, discover what the assessment uh, that we made a couple of years ago show in terms of results. Okay, there you go, Simone. Yes, thanks a lot. So this is the result of our assessment that we published at Quantis in, in a report measuring fashion two years ago. And by the way, this study uh, was also uh, mentioned by uh, other uh, great uh, publication recently, the, the GFA uh, work uh, built on this uh, kind of uh, data. And uh, what is interesting to note here on this graph is that more than 50% of the global impact in terms of carbon footprint is coming from tier two, three, and four. So all the fiber production and the processing of this raw material can really have an impact in terms of footprint when we are looking to the full sector. Therefore, if we want to really act on material thing, we have to consider the good um, selection of fiber and the good processing in order to design our future. So that's the, the key message during this uh, uh, little exercise with our audience. Well, I can tell you, Simone, people didn't hit it exactly right. So hopefully it's been a, a good awareness um, for, for everybody in the audience. And I think we've got some of our technology working back again now. So I think uh, maybe yeah. did, people didn't see me till now. So one of the things that I did want to highlight um, when I look at the, the results is that a lot of people underestimated the impact of the fiber. Um, and the fiber choice is such a fundamental part, uh, Simone, of the decision to create a sustainable garment. Yes, indeed. It's really one of the key aspects and the key uh, driver. So in terms of eco-design and in terms of action for the future, the fashion brands have to, to work on that. Uh, we cannot ignore it because the pressure and the challenge is so, so big that we have to focus our effort on the most important thing. Absolutely. And that's where we'd like to share with you Naya Renew, which is a new offering in the market, um, a fiber choice that is a circular fiber choice that uh, is perfect for women's wear. Um, so this was a, a fiber that uh, Eastman has launched into the market just just this month. So it is uh, fresh news and, and maybe a lot of people haven't heard about it as yet. So 
to know Naya Renu is to understand how Naya Renu is made. Um, so forgive me to put up a, a little production schematic here. Um, so Naya Renu is a cellulosic fiber, a yarn or a staple fiber that is 60% made sourced from wood pulp and 40% sourced from recycled content. So Naya Renu is made with certified wood pulp and acetic acid, 60% wood pulp, 40% acetic acid. So we get our wood pulp, uh, Simone, as you know, from our from certified forests. Um, and that's ground down into wood pulp. And in Kingsport, Tennessee, we combine that with acetic acid. Now, the magic of this solution is where we get that acetic acid. So we get that acetic acid from waste plastics that are diverted from landfill. So a whole set of complex waste plastics that are fed into our carbon renewal technology, broken down into molecular parts, and then rebuilt up as building blocks into an acetyl stream where we extract our acetic acid. So it is an amazing solution because on one side, 60% wood pulp, 40% uh, waste plastics. Um, so we're very excited to bring this to market because we see it as circularity without compromise. Um, not only is it sourced from uh, renewable wood pulp and recycled uh, waste plastics, it's also biodegradable. Um, and on the plus side, there's so many other benefits. Um, we have no trade off in quality. So the end product is indistinguishable from um, our virgin Naya product. It has a reduced carbon footprint, um, viable solution for many plastics that if this solution did not exist would end up genuinely on landfill. And uh, we're bringing it to market at a full commercial scale. So it's a really, uh, really exciting place to be right now. Yes, and, and just to, to jump on that, uh, uh, because I like the, the concept of no compromise. And it's true that in terms of circularity, which is definitely a good uh, accelerator, we have to somehow uh, back up uh, uh, these uh, different uh, solutions with metric based or scientific based uh, tool and, and, uh, and assessment to be sure that from an environmental perspective, it's a more interesting uh, solution. And it's nice to, to see that the, the carbon footprint or the environmental footprint is also here to confirm that there is no compromise also in terms of environmental perspective, in addition to no compromise in terms of quality. Yeah, yeah. And, and the other side is no compromise in terms of, we very much see um, at Eastman that circularity and sustainability needs to be holistic. Um, so if we look at Naya today, our whole portfolio has focused on, you know, responsible sourcing, um, safe use of hazardous chemicals, actually no hazardous chemicals or, or discharge of hazardous chemicals, um, a low carbon and low water footprint and biodegradability. And with Naya Renew, we're adding that one extra element, which is capturing value from plastic waste and integrating that into our overall solution, um, which brings, to, brings a very powerful um, product to the market, um, especially when you think that we're delivering it not at pilot, but at full commercial scale. And one of the things I do want to reiterate is the fact that it does not mean any compromise on the quality of the, the, end, the end fabric. Um, so we can see, be it a filament yarn or a staple yarn, all the inherent qualities of the fiber in a fabric, be it the hand feel, the, the softness, the, um, the attributes of dry time or reduced pilling, all of those remain. Um, and, and that in itself is something that can really drive circular solutions because sometimes there's a misperception that there is um, a trade-off when you start bringing in sustainable or circular solutions. I mean, I think you've seen that perception in the market, Simone. Yes, yes, in, in, indeed. And uh, uh, what I noted is that this kind of solution is uh, 
available now. And uh, unfortunately, I would say that we don't have too much time. So we are in the decade of ac action, as uh, IPCC or United Nations said. So now we really have to have big commitment, right? And make some decision according to uh, sustainability science and then concrete action and concrete action on important thing and and we have to to act uh, uh, quite uh, quickly so it's uh, it's a good uh, example of uh, circularity solution available for the market yeah totally agree we have to act with speed now so we were asked to put together simone and myself a one page of our uh, key learning so let's give it a go simone <laughs> so so our key message is we have to act now and, and focus on, on concrete actions. As Simone said, we do not have much time on our hands. Um, the, the greenhouse gas problem, um, along with the, the growing um, volumes of textile waste in the world are such that there is a very urgent need to take action. So our first takeaway is act now. And we have a collective responsibility to take urgent action for a sustainable future. So that's why Simone and ourselves are working together. That's why we're working with people across the value chain, because we've got to make solutions available today across the value chain. Yeah, and I, I will take the, the, the second one because, again, uh, I repeat the message, but it, it, it's so strong that uh, there is no space for for compromise and i'm trying to make the link with uh, a previous session that i attended this afternoon on on the fashion pact and when fashion brands are committed at that level and then for instance on the climate change um a pillar they are following the science-based target initiative when you are trying to define the corporate footprint so the baseline uh, to, to, to assess the, the environmental footprint of each company, you know that uh, a large part of the, the environmental profile impact is related to uh, fiber and raw material. And therefore, no compromise is also because the science is helping us to identify where the brand fashion, uh, the fashion brand, sorry, have to, to work. And we know that this is something key. So I'm, I'm very happy to, to, to share again this message on the, the key aspect to, to properly design the fiber and the processing for the, the future of the, the sector. Fully agree, Simone. And our next one is there are commercial circular solutions at scale available in the market. And we shared one today with Nai Renu. But really, our, our, our plea is to check out the, the different technologies out there. There are solutions available. Um, and there are solutions available at scale. Um, because I know everybody can be concerned about um, a pilot, a pilot, uh, a pilot solution when really you need something that can be delivered commercially. So there are solutions there. Naya Renu is one, but there, are, but there are other ones. So just to say that you can act now because there are solutions there. So just take that first step. Yeah. And uh, uh, another key aspect uh, when we prepared this, uh, this session with, uh, with you, Ruth, was to highlight the need of the collaboration. Um, and uh, just to, to build on that, uh, uh, I will have the pleasure in a couple of days uh, to, to be speaker in another event in, in Parma in Italy. And it's an event named uh, Regeneration 2030 with some session focus on food. But we will have also the pleasure to have uh, Paul Polman as a representative of the Fashion uh, Pact also speaker in that event. And for me, it's an example where the collaboration is key, of course, in a pre-competitive way within a sector. But what about open the collaboration to other sector? Because the, the challenge is, is big and some dynamic are requesting collaboration also between different sectors. So I would like to, to invite you to, to join as well this uh, regeneration uh, event and also to try to 
push the collaboration within the sector, but also outside the the the, sec the fashion and uh, luxury sector. Okay. And our final one um, is that both of us feel that COVID um, has helped crystallize focus and intention um, on sustainability across the value chain. Um, I think as consumers, we all feel a, a heightened sense of appreciation and awareness around sustainability. And, and that is translating you know, across the value chain as well. The conversation has changed. The conversation has become more urgent. The conversation has become much more intentional um, around people genuinely looking for, for solutions. And, and my feeling is that the, the conversation has moved outside the sustainability department into the other, the other areas and other departments around, around brands. Yeah, I, I, I fully agree. And honestly, the, this, this situation is also a way uh, to identify uh, where the sustainability was only a nice to have topic. Uh, and if it was the case, uh, today the pressure is so high that it's not anymore a, a, a item on the agenda. If it's something that it's considered strategic and it's a core um, value of, of a company and now is really a, a good time to to tackle this and address this uh, challenge in the more uh, valuable uh, way so this last point related to the the context is uh, is challenging but uh, it's also a, a push for for some sustainability uh, decision uh, within uh, companies from my perspective yeah which is a is a positive move. So we were presenting circularity at scale, sustainability um, and fashion without compromise. So um, what we'd like to do now is uh, hear a few questions. So we are opening uh, the, the floor to some questions. So please uh, go ahead and type in some of those questions. Okay, so um, Sony, I'm not sure, can you see the chat, but I have it here. Um, what materials are used for recycled feedstocks? Uh, probably I can take that one. Um, so if we're looking at Naya Renew, we're, we're currently using recycled uh, waste plastics. It's um, a range of complex waste plastics, up to seven different types of plastics. Plastics that today, you know, do not um, have viable solutions for recycling. Um, with uh, Naya Renew right now, we have about half of our feedstocks is coming from um, post-consumer carpets. And then we are also using a mix of polyolefin packaging and co-polyester um, also. So it's a, it's quite quite a quite a range a range of plastics. Okay, let's uh, go to the next question. Um, maybe this one for you, Simone. Um, you mentioned having a scalable solution is key. How important is that to the brands that you talk to? Yes. Uh, yes. 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 Uh, I, I was uh, uh, trying to to define the, the 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 answer from my perspective. It's true that uh, when we are uh, working with uh, fashion brands, we are bringing this scientific approach to quantify the 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 environmental footprint of a company. Then, when you have these figures with you, you cannot consider them as a theoretical exercise. So the the idea is not only to, to take the picture and to develop the corporate footprint. The idea is to translate it then in a concrete action plan. And if we are talking about concrete action plan, you have to include the business per perspective and therefore the scalability of the solution is key. Otherwise, <laughs> we are in another world. And uh, uh, today we know that we have to be quite pragmatic, visionary, I would say, in terms of uh, um, mission and engagement and commitment, but then be quite pragmatic and put in place concrete action. So it's key from what I can uh, discuss with uh, brands uh, around the world. Okay. 
thanks for that, Simone. So um, one here, um, can this uh, uh, fabric be bought in small quantity? So, um, so we actually, uh, Naya, with Naya Renew, we sell the fiber um, to mill. So I'm going to show um, folk uh, my contact details afterwards. So you feel free to connect with me and then we will, we will connect you with um, our network of uh, spinners and mills. Um, so that uh, is no problem. Um, another question here, um, what category or product type of women's wear do you believe that Naya is most useful for? Um, so very interesting question, delighted uh, that somebody um, asked that one. So um, Naya is actually extremely versatile. That's perhaps one of its uh, Key, key benefits in the market. So as a filament yarn, um, it lends itself to elegant, luxurious fabrics that have wonderful, you know, um, hand feel and elegance and drape um, with beautiful luster. And um, as a spun yarn uh, blend, you get these soft cocooning uh, fabrics that have wonderful attributes as well in the fabric, such as um, not just the hand feel, but like dry time and reduced peeling. So um, it really does range from, you know, elegant wear to, to comfort everyday wear um, and indeed, you know, sleep wear. I'd say Simone, if I'm really being honest, you know, it's probably, it's probably what I'm wearing most days. So it's extremely, extremely comfortable. And uh, I think the world is changing to much more comfortable fashion. So uh, it's a perfect, perfect choice there. Um, so we have a, another one. Oh, no, we're being told that time is out this morning. So what I'm going to do is um, just pop up our contact details. Um, so again, my name is Ruth Farrell and I'm joined today with uh, Simone from uh, Qantas Italy. So uh, please feel Thanks free lot, to Ruth. any of us and we'll be happy to connect with you. So thank you very you much. Time. See you soon. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Ciao.